Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about servo drive tuning. Every uh, servo has uh, some tuning required to get it to work optimally and it's really critical that a direct drive mount because there's no gearing to rely on. The stiffness of the mount is all coming from the motor and the control loop. In a servo drive you have a inner loop which is a current loop, the fastest loop. At the most fundamental level what the drive does is it drives current to the motor windings so it's creating current. Outside of that the next loop outside of that is a velocity loop it controls the speed, and the speed is sensed by the encoder at, by the, taking the derivative of position. And outside of that is a velocity or position loop. Okay, so we tune from the inside out. Um, we tune the current loop first, the velocity loop, and then the position loop. And in the drive and in can open drives can be controlled in both velocity mode and position mode, and we use both modes. So we are going to. We do tracking in velocity mode and we slew in position mode and go to velocity mode. Okay, in fact, there's, there's other modes. Um, and what the beauty of this is that because we're using a commercial drive, we have built into it very powerful tuning capability and a very elaborate control loop that has lots of adjustments that we can adjust. And so I'm going to talk, uh, go through the tuning step for the declination axis um, and talk more about that. One thing that I'm not going to show is there's another piece of tuning which is the motor phase commutation. Now in the absolute encoder drive like this drive here is with absolute encoders the when the uh, drive is powered on the absolute encoder knows the exact angle of the shaft relative to the stator the rotor relative to the stator because the encoder is reading the rotor angle. To commutate a three phase direct drive motor or brushless DC motor, you have to know that shaft angle, the angle of the shaft relative to the windings. And there's a system by which a sophisticated drive like this can automatically search and find that phasing. And that's one of the beauties of absolute encoders is once you have that, that phasing is, can be permanently stored in flash on that drive and you never have to recalibrate it. With an incremental drive, you either need, uh, or incremental encoders, you either need hulls or some, you know, thing to tell you where you are on the phase curve or sometimes they some motors start and they do a little dither they do a little they jog and they find their phasing but with a with absolute encoder there's no there's no jogging required um, and the phasing is a really important part of tuning but that can be done with just the motor the bare head the bare motor not built into the mount and that's probably the preferred method because the motor knows nothing about the load at that point and what it's going to do is turn and search and hunt and it's going to be a very poor quality control loop so that's best done with just the bare motor before you do the full assembly of the mount but once it's done it's done and you never have to retune it okay so so right now you can see i have my drive on powered on my wall outlet and you can see the little flashing light and this is the drive i'm going to tune here this is my declination drive and i have plugged in here a serial cable, a regular serial cable that goes to a little dongle that goes into the back of my laptop. A regular serial converter, you know, just a regular serial port converter. And then I have my mount tuning software, the Copley Zenus mount tuning software. Okay, so over here in my mount software, and I've got it connected, it's made a connection, it knows, whoops, sorry, it knows the CAN address. But here's the position, velocity, and current loop. So I select the current loop, and that is all the stuff in the loop filter. And these are, there's current limits, time limit, continuous current, um, and the gain, current gain, and an integral term. And there's an auto-tune function in here, and that's what I'm going to use to double check this, this tuning. And that's how I'm going to do the um, initial stage tuning for current. Okay, so I bring it up, and the first thing I want to do is turn down the current so I don't let it go to where it's going. And I go to, in this case, 0.2 amps of drive current, and it's going to sweep through the current, and the mount's going to make a lot of noise, and then it's going to, it's going to do that at a fixed frequency, and then it's going to do it over frequencies. And that's going to cause vibration in the, in the telescope, and anything hooked up 
to that axis and so I've taken my camera off because I don't really want it to shake my camera because and that's also why I've got the, the current turned down because it will be pretty noisy and you'll definitely feel the vibration okay so this is current auto tuning and it'll start ramping up the current to make with a uh, hundred Hertz step and then it's gonna adjust the gain this gain and the integral proportional and integral gain terms and you can hear the mount starting to do to make noise but it's not really moving and as you can see it's going to start ramping up and it's changing those gain parameters ramping up the current and looking for a nice step response and it's going to try a bunch of different combinations and hopefully to give us an optimal current loop. So current driven versus current measured. Okay, now it's going through these tones where it's doing uh, different test frequencies. You can hear it's fairly loud. There you can see it start to roll off. And then it gives you, uh, this one has got 3.4 kilohertz, and it gives you some proposed tunings. And you can pick those or, and save, or save them in flash. And so I'm gonna pick, I think I'll probably pick the medium one, but then I'm gonna go on and do the other tunings and then I can come back and change one of these if I need to. So you can see that the, the servo drives velocity loop. This is the velocity loop. It's pretty complicated. Um, it has a lot of terms, but, the, but we're going to use basically just two terms. We're going to use the proportional and integral term. So that's the requested velocity. There's a limiters and filters on the input end. We use a limiter, a rate limiter. Five, you know, that's our 5 RPM rate limiter in this case. Um, and then these are the integral and proportional turns and the drain turn turns it on turns on that parameter and then so that's our sensing feedback we go out and we command current from velocity and then velocity is measured as the derivative of position and fed back into that control loop and then we're going to use a little plotting chart to tune it so back here in this main this, sorry yeah this main window there's this oscilloscope chart let me go back and reclick it this one here and we're going to use this to do velocity loop tuning okay and it will give me it'll ask for what function I'm putting in and then um, I can set this up to give me the velocity input request with the limited because we have rate limiters the actual velocity this is the function I want and I'm going to use the sine wave to start with and then the amplitude is a speed in RPM and the frequency is how fast it's going to go. So I'm going to try some and then I'll film what I'm doing. Okay, so in this initial set of settings I've got, you can see that per this magenta is the requested limited velocity. This is the error and this is what it achieved and it's not actually moving. So my gains in this velocity loop are too low. Um, so where is... Yeah, so the gains are over here. So I'm gonna have to bump these up. So I'm gonna try some, I'm gonna try making this 500. And we'll see how it goes. Okay, I can already hear it's doing something different. I'm gonna go a little faster on the request. Okay. So what I want is that green to go to zero. I want no tracking error. So let me go a little higher on this too. Let me go way up to say 1700. Yeah, it's hard to see, but the mount is actually moving a little tiny bit. It's moving back and forth at two hertz, just a little tiny bit. So it's really moving. There you can see the gain. I've got a pretty high integral gain and a pretty high uh, velocity loop proportional game and you can see you just have a fairly small error this is the error and right where we cross zero there's a little error um, 
it's about um, five percent just for about um, you know 100 milliseconds or so so it's not too bad so I'm gonna go and try the position loop tune and I may have to go back and adjust this velocity loop tune I also wanted to show you can do square wave inputs in velocity mode and that gives you some interesting insight um, into the effects of the integral and proportional terms so um, that's useful because the edges contain all frequencies as you know and then this, you can see your convergence to steady state okay I like this one a little better it's a little lower gain I always shy away from high gain because that gives you that's how you get into trouble with stability so pretty good what you need with a small gain setting so now I'm doing position. I switched to position and uh, I'm doing a 200,000 encoder tick move every two seconds and uh, the limited, which is the, the speed limited input, because this is designed, this is set up to do uh, an S-shaped profile ramp limiting on velocity. Uh, so that's the, the magenta line, which is lying right underneath the active load, which is blue. And then the error you can see is the following error is green and it's as little as 200 ticks and there's 57 ticks per microsecond so that's about four sorry per arc second so that's about four arc seconds in worst case so you can see as it crosses over um, where the speed the zero point or where the speed is changing there are these little blips but it's generally following pretty well so that looks pretty good and looking at it it's not unstable which is good and it would sound it would be very angry if it was unstable it would you could hear it it will shake and rattle and uh, also to check the drive currents too and the control panel you know we're not seeing more than let's go back to focus and look in the control panel and it's hard to see here but it's about peaking at about 0.2 amps so really good. Don't want to use too much current. So another thing that I want to point out is that it's, it's you with this motor you want to make sure you check the tuning at different positions, and that's because this quarter this motor has iron has a slotted um, the right way to say it, is it has a slotted stator windings. They're, they're angled slots, but it means that the torque curve is not constant with angle, and so you're going to have a different amplifier uh, current being driven depending on the angle and so you can when, you, when you're tuning in here and you do, and you stop the motion and go back into focus when you stop the motion it turns off the drive and then you can reposition to a different angle and start back up again start your motion again and make sure you're okay. And that also is going to cover different balance points because no mount is perfectly balanced. So you want to check at different balance points to make sure everything's okay. You you do want to be pretty well balanced, but it's not super critical. It'll take a little bit of imbalance. But um, you want to you want to generally be neutrally balanced so that the telescope won't move under by itself. So just neutral relative to friction it doesn't have to be super highly balanced. I should mention this trajectory limiting function too. This is pretty important because here I've got us limited to 1.7 RPM and 0.15 rev, rev per second squared for acceleration and deceleration. And that's why this graph here, which is the input, or sorry, which is the filtered command, is is, is rate limited. It's limited by acceleration to have this rate here. It's supposed to be a square wave. This is supposed to be a square wave at 0.3 hertz. Uh, of 200,000 counts at 0.3 hertz, but it's it's rate limited, so um, that gives you a nice smooth motion. Um, go back and focus. And the it's critical. It's critical to have the rate limiting because otherwise you're asking you're you're going to drop out of your control because you're really asking too much out of it. So you want to set rate limits that are realistic and get us to a target RPM and a reasonable speed. And um, you got to remember that the RPM we're talking about is usually less than one for a telescope mount. 
it's pretty it's pretty low and so this is this is you know this is a fraction of an rpm right now maybe it's about an rpm but that's pretty fast that's fast enough for slowing okay and i've got those gain settings that i like and now i can uh, go back to this control panel i can save them to a file uh, i'm gonna make a new file here or i can and i can flash them into the drive memory which i will do they're also going to be accessible through the program, but it's a good point to get a safe tuning stored in flash so when the mount's powered up and if it comes on without getting any tuning data loaded by the program, it's got a working tuning stored in its flash. Okay, so now I've got the tuning done with the Copley servo drive. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to run the mount control software. And we're going to that's tune, same tuning is already resident, but it, there's features, there's a tuning feature in the software that lets us do our own tuning of those three key parameters. So we'll go ahead and fire it up and do some slowing. Okay, so I fired up. I fired up the program. I clicked the start can button. You can see the messages coming in. I'm going to enable the RA drive. It tells me it's fired up. Enable the deck drive. I'm going to go ahead and turn power on to them. Both of them, so now they're operational. It gives me sidereal time, current right now, they're not going anywhere. It gives me raw ticks. Um, it gives me, um, it's uninitialized uh, as far as where it is, even though it's absolute, I'll fix that. Uh, it's got a pier side right now, it's west. The It's pointing more or less straight up, so that means I know that it's the, the real sidereal time is about five hours. 49 minutes, zero seconds, and at zenith it's our latitude, which is about 47 degrees. So since I know it's just at zenith, and I'll sync to that, that's where we are, that's altitude azimuth. Um, so we should start, go ahead, go ahead and we'll run in profile position mode which is what we're going to use for slewing. It's a, it's a position mode control. That's really going to become automatic. Um, and if I, so I, I should already have the tunings that I want in there. And suppose I want to go to six hours and write ascension and say 49. I should be able to click slew to target. And the mount just drove to it and these were highlighted while it was in the slewing mode. So. I'll do a couple more of those and you can see, let's go back to five hours and say 39. And you can see the status while it's still slowing, then it's done slowing. There you go. Okay, right now I was on M51, I'm going to slew over to M3, type in the coordinates, and then we'll go slew, we'll see we got there, it's done slowing. Okay. There's M3, looks real nice. And now it's, that's quite, it's quite bright, you can tell. So that's just 15 seconds with the course setting. So that slew is just dead on.